Hey, hey, everybody, this is Larry. This is day 14 of the Lego Day Challenge. Hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, join me on Discord. Let me know what you think about this one. Uh, this one, uh, today I'm a little bit late. Uh, it is actually uh, 7 a.m. here. I, I don't know. If you watch my <laughs> embarrassing advent of code uh, video for, for the 14th, uh, I, let's just say that I drank a little, little bit too much last night and I was, I don't know, not having it. But after like a couple of hours of sleep, I'm usually pretty good. So uh, I, I, that's what I think. Uh, let, let's see how I actually do on this video and, and this problem. Uh, actually, also, like I kind of, I'm a little bit sad that um, uh, to, I mean, I didn't really miss it. But if you watch the video, I basically missed it, like solving the, the advent of code. Um, it, 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 yeah. Um, it, and, and the sad part is that, like, I think it's a very interesting problem. I mean, I think part. Yeah, I could have part one was interesting. Part two, like I uh, ever since then, I, uh, people posted like creative solutions to part two, and I'm like, oh, maybe I could, uh, you know, it would have been fun to explore by myself, of course. Uh, but I was just, if you if you want to watch the video, just not having it, right? You know, that was only like five six hours ago. So, eh. but if, by now I am good. I took a nap, uh, and I'm happy to kind of just look at today's farm. So with all, all that said, let's get to it. Today we have 2762 continuous subarrays. Okay, so you have nums, a subarray nums, it's called continuous. If do, 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 do. Uh, I, I can't just do, 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 do. I, I have to actually read it. <laughs> okay, indexes, a huge pair of indexes. Uh, did I... Oh, okay, so... <laughs> I don't know why they do this i1, i2 thing less than, uh, it's a little confusing, but basically everything in between um, is less than or equal to two, right? So uh, we turn the total number of them. Okay, man, my reading is still a little bit not comprehending. It has to be a subarray, right? Okay, so I mean, I think the first thing to notice is subarray. I, I mean, I don't know if you, the viewers at home have done it, but I misread subarrays all the time of subsequence, so it's a, it's a good thing to kind of um, remind yourself. But okay, so then here, um, keeping in mind that subarray, um, right, so that means that, uh, so one thing that I would say is that, okay, some people might say it is sliding window or whatever, I mean, and it may be, but the way that I've been actually thinking about these kind of problems the last whatever, uh, the last year maybe, as you've kind of watched this channel and stuff, um, maybe not you, but you know, as I'm doing these videos anyway, um, is that I've been kind of thinking of, of things in terms of contribution, right? And contribution is just my way of saying that that is the, um, uh, uh, for each, for each index, how what does it give to the answer, right? And what I mean by that is that like if I, I do something like uh, for i in range of n, right, just going through the nums, right? So nums of i is the, the current number. Um, and then it's like, okay, well, if num sub i is the last element of a subarray, being meaning the rightmost element, what is its contribution to the answer, right? Uh, and for this particular one, um, uh, there are a couple of things, right? One is that, um, I forget, how, I don't know how to say it, maybe, because I'm still, maybe I'm still not 100%, but I do feel good, good-ish. Uh, maybe I need to hydrate a little bit more, though. But, um, yeah, and what I mean by that is that they kind of wrote it in this way, maybe to kind of, uh, almost the opposite of how I would think about it, maybe in a way to kind of try to trick you a little bit, or at least, like, misled you a little bit. But, for example, if you have, uh, you have this array, and the last element is four. Well, what is the contribution to the answer? Uh, well, it just seems that, um, uh, yeah, this particular four, you'd go all the way to the left, up to the five. Oh, actually, oh yeah, yeah. Well, actually, no, no, no. It would only go up to the four. And and as a result, it has what I call three, I mean, it's not just me, but I call it three degrees of freedom, right? Because you could choose, um, to stop here, stop here, and stop here. So then now you ha you have um, you could choose between three things, and that is the contribution to the answer. Um, so that's part one. That's how I think about like okay, well, for, so for each number, you're trying to go see how far you can go back. Um, this particular one, uh, actually, why doesn't the four connect to the five? Because the 
well, the five is smaller than, or five minus four is less than two, right? So it should be good, but the reason why it isn't is because there's a two in here. So don't, so there is this um, thing we talk about, or I talk about a lot about invariance, right? Invariant is just a, I don't know if it's a fancy word, uh, but, but definitely it's not something, it's, I feel like it doesn't come up enough, or maybe people, and this is me too, just to be clear, because I feel like when I learned it in ComSci, when I was like a kid, uh, much younger, and and I don't think I understood what it meant until I kind of did more and more problems. Uh, but even then, it took me a long time to think about it in terms of invariance. And invariance are things that don't change as certain other things change. Um, and that's kind of vague, but but that's how you kind of um, be able to prove things, right? And there are some invariants, like loop invariants. Uh, loop invariant just means that every time... Uh, there's some nuance and some, some people define it slightly differently, but... But uh, vaguely speaking, it's just every time a loop happens, something doesn't change about uh, 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 um, the beginning of the loop or something like that, or maybe the end of the loop, right? Um, yeah, like here, uh, like a very lazy loop invariant for the for loop is that I will always be between 0 and n minus 1. So, th I mean, maybe it's not super helpful to think of it that way, but just in general, right? So, okay, so part of this loop invariant is that uh, if we are able to kind of keep a data structure, and when I think of, say about invariance, is that, well, if 2 can only go, because the 2 and the 5 are no brainer, so if you kind of have a data structure that keeps track of 4 and the 2, uh, well, here, we, it, when we go to the next number, uh, which is the 4, the second 4, um, when, when we're at the second 4, um, the invariance is still true, so that, and, and the, you need to have the invariant, otherwise it becomes n square, right? Because if you just go like, okay, well, let's add the 4, now we have to check everything again. But it turns out you don't have to check everything again, because you already assume that, um, or part of the invariant is that everything to the to the left of 4 has already been checked. So in this case, maybe we would only keep, you know, 2 and the 4 on something, right? Um, and And yeah. And, and as a result, uh, then you don't need to check everything in between, in before, or you don't have to check every pair of numbers before your current number because that's already been checked, right? And at the end of the loop, every so at the beginning, maybe you could even, uh, we, we have to kind of clean up on a data structure because we're still kind of like in between stuff, but maybe you could say before the loop, uh, everything to the left of i is. Um, I just say solved. I don't know for whatever that means. Uh, and why I'm being a little bit vague is just that th that's problem specific. So I just mean like for for this particular problem, solved just means that all the sub array that we keep track of um, is ha uh, holds this properly where this is true, right? The the less than or equal to two thing. And then after the loop, um, everything including. Uh, num sub i is solved, right? And then we pass it on to the next element um, uh, uh, in the beginning of the loop block, um, and then there'll be left of i again, right? So that's kind of the idea. And okay, so so um, I'm, I'm a little bit deep on the explanation today. I don't know why, because I don't even know what anyone watches this, uh, this particular one, because I feel like this is, um, yeah, I feel like this is kind of the things with re respect to invariants. Um, that will allow yourself harder problems, or maybe even easier problems, right? But just problems in general. So okay. So what? So the other another thing. Then you know, I, I kind of you know um, put things like this here. But then the question is, uh, what 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 are we keeping track of? Well, and that's kind of part of the observation. And in this, maybe I would just keep track of um, the biggest element and the smallest element, right? Because for here. Um, Basically, everything, uh, vaguely speaking, everything that's not the biggest element or the smallest elements don't matter. And that's basically the idea. Um, okay, so then now that means that we want to repeatedly be able to get the biggest element or and the smallest element, right? So yeah, and a couple of ways you can do it uh, within a subarray. Um, the, uh, you could use sorted list, which maybe we'll do, but, but honestly, you can also use monotonic queues, right? Mono queues. Um, and also maybe you can also use 
I think heaps you apply fine if you really, you know, with two heaps in this case, I believe, one for large and one for small, and that'll be fine in a lazy removal kind of way, right? But uh, but yeah, so there are de definitely things you can do. Um, I think for this one, definitely I w for optimal uh, complexity, I would just do the mono queue. Uh, and we'll, we'll go for, and it's kind of amusing because we we're talking about invariance and monotonic queues, mono queues are the thing that um, I think. Uh, like, I feel like a lot of people just memorize it or whatever, right? Um, and they're like, oh, memorize the pattern, memorize the code, and then just like, oh, you guys see this, this, and this, you do that. And honestly, I I don't memorize the code, which is why sometimes I mess up with typos and whatever, um, which is fine because I'm not here to, you know, I'm not here for memorization, I'm here to solve problems, right? Uh, and anyway, <clears throat> but the thing is that you can, uh, you know, I don't I don't like the name monotonic queues because it is a property of the queue, but it's, it doesn't the name doesn't tell you how to do it. And sometimes people kind of confuse the two, right? Because um, they, I, I consider it an emergent property, something that comes out of uh, figuring out an invariant. Um, but you know, like if if you if you ask me, like okay, so we need two things, right? We need a um, um, min mono queue, right? And maybe a max, well, definitely. So we have these two things, and you know, maybe it's people are like, oh, it's a mono queue. So is it like increasing or decreasing? And honestly, for either one, I have no idea. The the idea that I have is just kind of going through it, right? So let's just say we we stop the min mono queue, and I, I don't think I gave context about what what it is. Um, if you haven't known it, I actually have a video. Um, let me know in the disc let me know in the comments, and I'll, I'll post a link. Um, but but the idea for a min mono queue is just that you have a queue, which is kind of like a window, a sliding window, if you will, um, and then you're able to get the min element, right? That and you maintain that invariant. So okay, so how do I get a, a min mono queue? Say right. Well, uh, uh, let's just call it min queue. I say for now, right? So well, this has to be outside because uh, also do, 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 for now. But but yeah, and then now. Um, yeah, so there are two things that we, so the reason, so how I come up with, uh, how I think about mono queue is just thinking about, um, the idea is eliminating impossible answers, right? So let's say we have a min queue, then, and the idea is that, okay, let's say we have a sequence, a different one, right? That is like um, 5, 10, 15, 20, right? So in this case, uh, f 5 would be the min Q for the first segment. And then if 5, after 5, 10 could be the min, the min element, sorry. And then after, if 10 is um, popped, then 15 could be, right? Uh, and when I say it like that is because if you have the opposite, let's say you have someone like this, oops. Um, the thing is that, okay, so you, you process 20, 20 is the min element, then now you get 15. Well, if you get, if you push in 15, 20 could never be the min element anymore, right? So that means that if 15 is in the window, 20 can no longer be the min element no matter what. So you might as well just pop it. So that's kind of the idea that I would say uh, behind this one. And as a result, then now it should be, um, I don't know if it should be clear, but, um, but it is so easy to see, which is that this is true. Um, let's just say x is equal to number of i, just for slightly easier typing, right? If the um, if the last element, oops, how did I miss that word? If the last element is uh, bigger than x, then because the reason is because we want to add um, a number x, right? And so if it's um, um, yeah, if x is smaller then that number will never be true anyway. So then, yeah. So then now we pop from the right side, and then at the very end, uh, uh, this and this is also another variant, right? So that at the end, end of this, then now, uh, either min q has zero elements, because that, that's part of the while loop, or min q, the last element min q uh, is less than x, right? So, or maybe equal to, then we just append x, right? So that's basically the idea behind min heap, I uh, mean, min, mono queue pretty straightforward i hope
Uh, and then we kind of have to use the same idea for max Q, right? And that's it, right? So that's, and then at the end, the, uh, or at the end of these two loops, then the invariant is that uh, min, min Q sub zero uh, is, is the min element, and same for max, right? Uh, within the window. Okay, and then now, as we said, then now, um, yeah, and, and maybe I is a little bit, uh, yeah, but then now we want to keep track of the left side of the window, right? So, um, which we did, uh, maybe I don't, I don't know that I did a good job of explaining that part, but yeah, so let's just say left is equal to zero, right? And maybe we can, well, I is equal to right now, just to kind of make that a little bit more clear. Because then now, left, basically left defines the, um, uh, the, the window, which min q and max q operates, right? So that's the other part of the invariant that, you know, these are things that when people say invariants and, and things like uh, situation and properties as we go through the code, so that means that at here, uh, left to right, inclusive because we, we just append x uh is where min max q operates right okay so then now as a result we go okay well uh let's 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 you know if uh max q of the first element minus min q uh and because of of course max is going to be bigger than min so we can we don't need the absolute value if this is greater than two uh well while this is greater than two we have to remove something right so we have to pop something off the front uh and the front is going to be num sub left right so yeah so here we want to do left plus or equal to one uh th this is the current number that we remove so let's just call it y right and then uh yeah and then if min q of zero is uh, equal to y, then min q dot pop left. Oh, this should be, I, I, I can't, I've made a list, but this should be a, a q. I mean, I've been calling a q, so I'm just, a I'm still a little confused, clearly, but, uh, but that's okay. I've been talking a lot, maybe. But yeah, and, and that's really the idea, um, and also the, if the max q, yeah, and that's pretty much it, right? Uh, the invariant is such that this will always have at least one element, which is why we don't have to check for bounds or anything. Uh, the reason being that if there's only one element, then max q should be equal to min q, which means that this will never be true, right? So that's another invariant. Uh, so after this, that means that we have the length. So that means that uh, right uh, from left to right, or all, all the pairs of numbers are less than or equal to two. So this is the invariant at this point, right? And as a result, now we can just check, um, let's just say total for count, right? Um, as we say, you know, the number of degree of freedom uh, is just equal to how many choices we have. So we're just gonna minus left plus one, I think. Maybe I'm off by one, I'm a little bit lazy and tired, honestly. But yeah, and that's pretty much it in theory. Hopefully this is right. Looks okay, let's give a quick submit. No silly mistakes, please. There you go. And that's pretty much it. 17, 19 day streak. Um, yeah. And so what's the complexity here, right? Well, uh, we, have, uh, we have all these things, but at the end of the day, this is an O of N loop. Um, there are a lot of while loops, but everything in the while, remember, uh, we only append once per element. Well, twice, one, one, once per queue per element. Um, so we only do two things. So that means that even if these are popped, um, you can only pop once per element as well, right? So. So you sum it up, it's going to be O of N. And that's pretty much it. Linear time, linear space, and that's all we have for this one. Uh, I'll make it slightly smaller so you can see everything. One, This is maybe too small for people to see. I don't know. Take a screenshot or something. But I just want to put everyone on one page for, for y'all. Um, and that's pretty much it. That's all I have for this one. Let me know what you think. Thanks for watching. And yeah, stay good, stay healthy to commend to health. I'll see y'all later and take care. Bye-bye.